And welcome back to the True Patriot Podcast, folks. We have another special guest with us here on our interview series. This is a fellow angler out of Colorado and uh, a, a gentleman who has committed himself to helping others where possible out there. My friend and a good good uh, collaborator with uh, the True Patriot Outfitters and Romans Warrior Foundation, Mr. Terry Dore. Terry, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much, Gene, for having me on. I really appreciate it. Hey man, honor is ours. So let's uh, let's let's break it down here. So you and I met online through the CKFC yep. Colorado Kayak Fishing Club. What got you into fishing uh, from a kayak of all things? Were you a boat guy before? Is kayak fishing your first uh, first time going after, especially bass or multi species or whatever you do? Well, it's funny. I'll kind of start. I originally got started through my grandfather. This is many moons ago. So I grew up in Illinois and we used to get up early in the morning and go to the breakwater. But basically back then was the cane poles, you know, the oh, nice. really, like 12 foot cane poles. And you're just <laughs> yep. dropping it down there. And I'm thinking, this is this is the world. This is great. <laughs> um, so he got me into that. And then after that, you know, I, I did do a few of them boats back in Illinois. But when I came out here, I got my kayak in 2020. And we all know what happened in 2020. Um, so I live on a lake and for me, I'm just like, I love fishing and I've been around fishing my whole life. Um, that having the access just basically in our backyard. I mean, I go down maybe 40 feet and I'm in the water. Nice. So it's, Very it's, nice. it's just in, you know, you've got so much, um, you've got bass, you've got crappie, you've got perch, bluegill, uh, carp and catfish. Nice. So, um, and for me, it's like, you know, I, I enjoy and I've enjoyed fishing. You know, fishing has been a love of mine. Volleyball has been a, a love of mine. I know you had coached and I coached volleyball for years. And I'm like, the other I got, I need to put that aside. So I'm like, this is my, this is my golf. You know, when you look at people who say golf is their pleasure. Yep. Fishing is my pleasure. You know, fit and, and, and set saying fishing's easy. Catching is hard. But to me, being on the lake and just, you know, the peace and, and, uh, that you get being out there is second to none. And even my wife will join me on occasions. You know, in that, that in itself for the longest time, it's very easy to miss what it is, but you're right. There's the, there is a calm. There is a, even in the frustration when we're trying to chase these, you know, fish down that have the brain, the size of a, you know, a pea and they're outsmarting us half the time. There's a calm that comes with that, and it's easy to overlook what that is. Um, that's what led us, you know, in the recreational therapy piece there to yeah. realize that, well, now it makes sense why I'm so addicted to this is because this is where life makes sense to me. This is where things calm down. I do some of my best thinking when I'm chasing fish around, and regardless of the day, I may leave frustrated, but I still know I'm recharged, you know, and that's... Yeah. Yeah, man. When you live on a lake like that, um, this this is the jealous me. It's, yeah, because yeah, I gotta I gotta haul <laughs> to find find water around here and, that I could fish. Yeah, and I know you're not too. I don't think you're too far from me. I, I've even offered others. I say, come on out. You know, I'm I'm one that I fished my whole life. So being able to see others catch fish, yep. that gives me enjoyment because you you look at them, you look at the kids and stuff like that. I've got some videos out there. We'll talk about this further on down, but it's just like. When you talk about it and you get that stuff, it just, it, it definitely brightens you. Yeah. You know, the, your heart, it's like, it's like the Grinch that grows three times too large <laughs> or whatever, you know, and it's, it just gives you a lot of excitement when, when it comes to that. And it, it, so for me, I love fishing and I do, and I always challenge myself each and every time I go on the water, um, you know, uh, but just a real, real quick, one of the tournaments I did enter I told myself, I'm just going to go top water all day. I want to challenge myself. Yep. And I did. So it, it's some of those things that just brings things to life and it makes me really enjoy being out on the water. 
That's awesome. That's awesome. So your your tournament fishing that started here in Colorado, or did you do that back? It the kayaking. I did do a few. Gosh, many moons ago, <laughs> uh, I did. I was a um, basically in the back of a boat. Mm-hmm. You know, a non angler. Yeah, yep. co anglers. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So I did a couple of those tournaments, which which was uh, um, interesting. You know, um, and that's when fishing really was not as big as it is now. Right. So challenges definitely but uh i enjoyed it and it just kept me i always want to kind of challenge myself moving forward what what can i do and i think with the kayaking it does that you know i'll I'll take it took the first year i just fished my lake then i'm like okay i want to start expanding so i try to do some other stuff connecting with people and then the third year was the colorado kayak fishing club so uh, each year i'm trying to expand where i can go yeah, uh, and I am totally, totally looking forward to 2023. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah. So, let's talk about you. What uh, What is yeah. it? So, obviously, this isn't your full time job. You have mm-hmm. a normal, grown up, uh, uh, full time job. What is that? So, I work for Ball Aerospace. Uh, nice. Been there. Yeah, I've been there since June. So, a little company. Six. Oh yeah, <laughs> very little. <laughs> very little. Um, another new aspect of of over the years, for probably 25 plus years, I was in printing. Oh, wow. And knew, didn't know outside, you know, I always thought that was the way to go. I got introduced to that through my father. Right. So I started at a small company in printing, and I'm like, oh, I love this. And now I look back thinking, boy, I wish I did something else in college. <laughs> Took something else because right. printing has died off. You know, you still got some of it, but uh, Ball Aerospace was just a um, phenomenal place to work with. Um, I got let go from a previous job and it came down to three opportunities and that was the bottom of the three I wanted. But now I look back at it and it's like, somebody's looking out for me, you You know, know. there's a faith and it's like, there was a reason why the other two did not come through. And now this company is just, it's phenomenal. I mean, I'm learning so much behind within this company. That's that's phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, you, You say the words, you know, ball aerospace and everybody's like, Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's mm-hmm. they're a they're a, a well known organization. Obviously, their their roots are deep. They're going nowhere, um, and they so are. yeah, that's that's super cool. That's that's funny that you say it was the least you know on the, yeah. on, the on the of the three when you were first looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that funny though, man? It's you know how our priorities, you know how they bounce around. I, I, I've been in IT my entire life, uh, twenty three years of. Uh, you know, professional IT. It took me that long to figure out exactly what what the hell I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, And I, as you mentioned before, I coached for 18 years, uh, primarily football, but also did some Mm -hmm. track, track and field and hockey in there. And yeah, you just, there, there's something to be said that just because you're good at something doesn't mean you love it. Right. Exactly. I, took a break and spent four years in the financial industry and just out of dumb luck, I can claim no, uh, no credit whatsoever, but dumb luck. I got out of it right before everything hit the dirt. Oh, sure. Um, and I was really good at commercial and uh, commercial lending and, and mortgages mm-hmm. and personal finance, you know, coaching. I was really, really good at it, but I never really loved it. And I made a ridiculous yep. amount of money for a young man at the time doing that. And again, I never really loved it. Yeah. And so, I went yeah, the same thing. I, I get same you, man. The printing. Yeah, same yeah. thing with printing. It's like I knew it. I wasn't challenged towards the end because I knew everything. And it's just like. I know where the direction it was going. Right. Um, my last printing job actually was with with Sears Holdings, and we know where that went, unfortunately. But it was a very interesting aspect to go through to see the challenges between what I was thrown into. I moved with it within into a different department, which kind of leads me into where I am with Ball Aerospace. So I kind of uh, uh, fluctuated between that, and and I'm right. like. I always want to challenge myself. I think the older you get, that's kind of one of the things that you want to do is challenge yourself. You don't right. want to be stuck. And, you know, Agreed. that's one of the things that, you know, uh, my father's entrenched in me too. He's like, you know what? Go for what you want. If it's something that you don't think is right, move on. Find something else. There's something else out there. And that's exactly what happened here. 
man, that's sage advice. Yeah. Yeah. I hope I can, I've tried to do that with my, with my 20 year old, you know, like I told him is stop thinking the next decision is the final one. Okay. It's just another step. All right. What you're doing now in college, what you're doing now, that's, that's, these things are going to change. Priorities are going to, you know, uproot so on and so forth. So yeah, that's definitely, that's awesome, man. So, you 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 have a normal very grown up job. I, I say that because I'm the guy that doesn't have a grown up job, and I'm fighting <laughs> like hell to make sure I don't have to go get one again. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but uh, um, but the 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 COVID era hits. You get out on your kayak. You start getting into you. You join the Colorado Kayak Fishing Club. What was what was the the reasoning behind that? Was it exposure? Was it the tournaments? What what was the draw initially with them? I could honestly, I was getting bored with my lake. Right. Um, right. I, I really wanted it, and I loved the lake and stuff. But I was getting bored, and I'm like, you know what? I wanted it's, it's it leads back to that challenge thing again. I wanted to challenge myself, so I said, you know what? I'll, I'll take a look and see how it goes. Sure. Uh, I think the very first tournament was down in uh, Pueblo and right next to me was Caleb Zimmer. And I just started talking to him and it was just easy conversations. Yeah. And I'm like, this is great. You know, everybody there is, you know, they want to win, but it's not like it's a backbreaker if you don't. Right. It's out there to enjoy the company. It's out there to challenge yourself. And what I like about it too, is at the end of the tournaments, because again, I have been fishing for 50 years, 50 plus years, but Colorado's new to me. Yeah, so the techniques and stuff is is a lot different than what I'm used to back in the Midwest. Yeah, it so, is. <laughs> so how they explain what they've used and how they use it, mm-hmm. it stays there. So right. um, and then there's been a couple times I've actually gone out with uh, Scott Brands, Big Fish Bucket List, and then Matt Kern, uh, who I connected with too. So kind of learned a little bit of their techniques. So hopefully that'll help me towards 2023. But um, Expectations were not that high for me. I'm, sure. I'm putting myself, I says, what I want to do is crack, if I can, crack the top tens in these tournaments. There you go. If I can do that, just something minor. I'm, I'm not expecting to, to win these things. These guys have been fishing these lakes for how long? So I'm new, and I, I got to put that carrot in front of the horse sure. just to make it challenging for me. For what it's worth, one of the things that I learned over, I've been doing competitive fishing for a lot of years, uh, primarily mm-hmm. out of a boat. I had my rookie season last year in the kayaks. Mm-hmm. We had a lot of good success there. And, and I'll, I'll tell you, when you can get the mental aspect locked in that you're not really fishing against anybody, it's just you. Yeah. Okay. And you're not fishing against the fish because they'll win. You got to work oh. with them. And on any given day, you know, it's, it's all a matter of what, what you can control. You can't control the other guy's decisions out there. No. It's only what you can control. So, yeah, when you get that Zen, I was talking to Eric and Leslie Ali, and Leslie has already jumped the gun on all of us on that. She's got uh-huh. that part figured out. Sure. So she's just going to be more and more dangerous if she keeps that and then just keeps adding fishing techniques, you know, to her tool. Yeah, belt. yeah we're all in trouble yeah. then. She's going oh, yeah. I mean, she's she's to clean house on both uh, <laughs> of the clubs. <laughs> it's the dynamic duo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, man, that's uh, that's good stuff. Yeah, the, you know, and that's that was my first introduction to a, a lot of those folks at the CKFC. While I don't fish um, uh, the events, I've mm-hmm. had the the honor to meet many of them and converse at length and interview many of them. Everybody that I've run into there has been very welcoming, willing to share information. You know, Caleb, I've, I've fished against him in the CKB mm-hmm. side of things. Sure, sure. I've met him at Shields and chatted with him. Oh, uh, he helped put together some some awesome stuff that Shields did for the True Patriot Outfitters and Romans Warrior. Yeah. Um, they are. They're just so easy to get along with and meet. We're, we're very lucky to have these two clubs in this state. Um, Definitely. you know, and the big one, you know, that helps folks get their, uh, you know, get their, their lines out there and, and get associated with a lot of this is the CKFC for sure. And so, oh, yeah. yeah, that's super oh, yeah. cool. I definitely agree. Good stuff. So what brought you and I, uh, based where our paths started across is we were chatting online through the club stuff, through fishing stuff is how we, mm-hmm. we, we met, um, and then you brought out Colorado's 
Fishing Adventures. This is a nonprofit yep. that uh, that you put together there, and uh, yep. that you're that you're setting out. So let's talk about it. What what <clears throat> led to that, and then tell us what it is. So so for me, it actually led from my wife and my three boys. They're like, you know what, Dad, you you really like fishing. This is like a passion that you have. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. And he says, you should do a YouTube channel. I says, no, nobody. You know what? I don't want to do that. And then I come to. Th- think about it. I'm like, you know what? That's that's kind of a nice little hobby. And I can honestly say I've really enjoyed being able to do that. And my favorite part is the editing. That's another new aspect to me is, is taking those videos and then being able to incorporate that in there and give some lessons. So what I've also done is put on there is, is offer it to kids. I've even offered it out to uh, on socks and cookies. I know when we talk about that in the past for any military, any um, uh, first responders that want to come out on the lake, come on out. I'll take you out. I I offer to anybody that I feel that could use a little getaway. It's not the biggest lake, but when you get out there, once you get in that kayak, once you get on the water, it's like everything just escapes. And again, I bring it back to the golfing. People with golfing, same thing. Now, do you have a pair of kayaks that you own yourself? I, I did. I sold one. Because okay. my wife doesn't, but I am looking to get probably another one. Okay. Or look for somewhere we're renting or something like that for days, and I know maybe it's. Something. I was gonna say you you yeah. you know a guy already, so I do. You're, you're good there. So, you let you let me know, and we'll. Uh, you know, I'm sure yeah. that uh, we can. You know, maybe the two of us together could take some take some folks out there with you. That would be great. There you go. That would be great because yeah. I. Um, but if you I ever really need. Want to. If you ever need, you just hit us up, man. You know that. Oh, that I mean, we're here. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. <laughs> So, so going back, that's how I kind of got started. And, um, you know, I think it started off really slow and then just trying to expand some of the, I think once I got into the, uh, tournament fishing, that's what people like to see, especially yeah. out in college. They want to see what techniques are you using yep. this late, this time. I think being out there, uh, learning myself from Scott Brands on one at Boyd, because to me, when I say Boyd, it was void Boyd because the first two times I was miserable. I mean, I couldn't believe how bad I was. I went, well, one of the times I think was end of June, and I got out a little late, the waves, and I got a 10 and a half Hobie. So it's like I couldn't go in some areas where others could go, and I'm just like, this is miserable. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it got better once I got out there with Scott. So so a couple things, and I, I'll go on record saying this. Um, yeah. Boyd's not my favorite. Okay, I fished it from my from my nitro many times. Um, Boyd is very limited on its offerings. I think anybody out there could agree with that. Um, it does not fish great for the bass species that we are looking for no. all over the place. It's no. got it's got its select areas, and if those areas are tied up, you're kind of tied to scrapping it. Yeah, you can have ten guys there. Yep. Yeah, I think where I was going, uh, and and I can say that was the September one. I think it was, and I thought I was well prepared. I was out there <laughs> warm. The only thing I didn't have was gloves, so it's like I had to call it after an hour, you know, with hour and a half of ending because my fingertips. And of course, my wife says she's at the at the dock picking me up, and. I catch a fish and I'm like, should I tell her maybe wait another half hour? <laughs> and like, no, I can't do that. I couldn't put her through that. So, um, yeah, that your, your driver's that. there. You better take yeah. care of your driver. <laughs> Trust me. I did. I, she's been, and, and I have to say that I know a lot of other guys probably, she's been a true backbone for me, allowing me to do these terms. She comes along sometimes and we'll spend the time at the verbo or whatever. And, um, she's totally behind it. And that's what I, that's awesome. I, I love about this and i said i got remarried in 2020 during the pandemic so that was the highlight for 2020 was, right. was that and um she likes to fish and and i got a little story because i think the first time i took her out here we're fishing and she's on one of the blow up kayaks back then we've had those and she's like oh i think i'm stuck on a rock and i'm like well usually rocks don't turn you in circles <laughs> so she was on a fish <laughs> a nice size fish so that was her first introduction oh to wow catching. yeah Getting yeah, pulled around so, on an inflatable. Yep, that's yep, awesome. Yeah. So. Yeah. The uh, that having that support system, man, it does get overlooked so often. Um, mm-hmm. 
but you know, and, and for me in my situation, a little bit different. I mean, my, my support system is the only reason I'm doing this. You know, my, sure. my best friend is who makes this possible for me to try to chase this dream down um, that I've wanted to do for 20 plus years. But beyond that, it's the, like you said, it's that emotional, it's that mental support. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's knowing that they know what you're doing and they're having, they feel, you know, that same enjoyment knowing that you are chasing something and doing something yeah. that you love so much. Yeah. I too uh, got remarried in 2017 and was very, very, uh, Congrats. you know, thankful to, to have yeah. that yeah. type of, of, of support system in place to make that possible. So yeah, man, that's can't understate that for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. No, I can't overstate can't. that. I can't overstate. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, well, that's awesome. So, yeah, and, you know, you alluded to something also, Colorado fishing being so different than the Midwest. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, Midwest, dude, you and I, Terry, we're used to chasing, you know, if you find the grass, you find the bass. You know, I mean, oh, that's, that's it. That is the name of the game out there. That's it. You know, here, if you find the grass, you better go buy a lot of tickets. <laughs> <laughs> there isn't a whole lot of it out here. <laughs> no, I've learned it's a lot different up there. You throw into the grass here. You want the basically on the outside of the weeds where sure. the grass ends is where things are catching or where you're going to catch them. And again, sure. I think back in the Midwest, I would do a lot of uh, wading in the Wisconsin River. Oh, that was another go. thing. It was just phenomenal. You see the deer, you see the eagles, and you're just walking down, and it's the same thing. You find a, a big hole. And hold on, because if it's not a large or if it's not a smallmouth, it's probably a northern pike. It could be a walleye and just that oh. that peace and quiet, you know. Um, yeah. But I get that now with the kayak side of things. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I I went to great lengths to try to get similar with my kayak to a bass boat. And then I appreciated about halfway through the season, I realized some of the things I want to bring over. But there are so many differences that I love about this over my bass boat that I had beyond the, the obvious, you know, when gas was $5 a gallon, you know, and I'm only putting yeah. it in one tank in my truck, not in two. Um, right. But beyond that, just the fishing aspects of it. Yeah. There's an intimate, uh, an intimate connection that you make with the water and with the surroundings from a kayak. Mm -hmm. You, you are, I'll tell you what, I was more in tune with wind direction change Holy Moses, I didn't know it changed that many times during the day. But in a oh. kayak, you absolutely can tell when it's moving on you. In a boat, it's got to be a drastic change for it to really yeah. make sense, you know, for you to really yeah. pick up on it. It's funny you say that because I've never experienced so much of the, not the wind, I forget what they call them again. Not wind tunnels, but it's just the the change of the wind just come out of nowhere. The Chinooks. And you gotta, yeah, and you just got to, you got to um, uh, plant and almost every occasion, plan for something like that. Probably yeah. to come at some point during the tournament that you're on. Yep. Um, and the one of the nice things too, leading back to the kayak and compared to boating, is like accessibility is just about anywhere. That I like about it. You know. Yep. Um, again, I, I wish I had gotten something a little bit larger than my ten and a half, but you know, I'm making some modifications. And I know, I think before we got on, I, I'm actually looking to try and get a, a trolling motor to add to mine for pre-tournament fishing yep. and then even looking at some of the other ones too that do allow that but you know little things to update but for me here even on this lake there's some areas that some boats and there's only a handful of boats that actually fish i'm i'm, I'm like one of probably three or four people on the lake that fish so oh, it's wow. like it's it's you come out you're gonna catch fish it's guaranteed it's guaranteed Stuff. but it's like the being able to access all and these points and all these others on reservoirs or lakes is just unbelievable. On the lake that you're under, they allow electric yeah. trolling motors? They do. Okay, good. They do. They do. Awesome. Then I'm yeah. in. I'm in. Yeah. I mean, I've got I'm a pedal drive system, and it's, I mean, the pivot drive from New Canoe is, is effective. It's good. It gets the job done. Um, it's got some advantages over other pedal systems. Sure. It's got some detriments compared to others, but it's just... I'll be it for me personally, you know, it's just, there's too much going on. 
you know, yeah. I got a, I got a hand steer when I'm doing the pedal system. Mm -hmm. So I got my rudder that I'm controlling with my hand and I got a fishing rod and then I got a fish and now I got an anchor and <laughs> you almost wow. need another person on that kayak with you to help you with some of that. Stuff. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Cause I, I get a yeah. little OCD at times where I have to have my stuff right where you. I like it, man. And I'm with you. <laughs> I work hard to get a system in place so that it's just on lockdown. Yeah. You know, and, and I think maybe that's just the, the tournament angling over the years. You try to get that clean, you know, fish yeah. clean. That's the thing. Yeah. So I should yeah. tell you, it's like then the, the, one of the funny things with my videos on the Colorado fishing adventures on YouTube is that I have, there's lots and lots of editing that has to be done <laughs> times that I cannot leave some of the stuff that happens. And it's like, there may be, I'm going for a spot. And, and it's funny because there could be, it's probably a post maybe here and then a post another 20 feet away. And I'm trying to get in between there. I'll hit the one post on the right and I'll do it again. <laughs> hit the post on the left. I'm like, how does that happen? I says, it's like, it's frustrating. I'm like, I'm just trying to get it here, but you always seem to, it's like a magnet must be on, to, on my lures that automatically attracts to these things. Dude, that's the that's real. Great. I mean, that's the real, yeah, the real yeah, deal. I, I was, I was just yeah. over the holiday. I was just explaining that the difference when you fish at the professional level, like say on the Bassmaster kayak mm -hmm. series or the all American, mm -hmm. when you're fishing against those guys, you pull up on a, on a target, right? And you know, everything about you is telling you there's a bass underneath that little bit of brush yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And you have the cast you need to make is on say the down uh, stream side in that little mm -hmm. eddy. And if you cast and end up in the bush or outside of it or on the upside, you probably just spooked them. That's so exactly you, it. So you get one cast one at it. <laughs> yeah. And if you're not that guy that hits that on that first cast and you get a nice lay down of that jig or that soft plastic that doesn't bloop in the water, you know, it yep. just lays on the water and sinks. Yep. If it all doesn't come together, you may not hit that four or five pounder that's hiding out underneath there because they're smart. You know, they, yeah, they you got to go away and come back, hopefully, hoping nobody else hits that. But you know, yep. with these lakes and reservoirs, somebody's going to. So, oh, yeah. Well, and when you fish against top level anglers, they're going yeah. to, you know, that's what oh, yeah. got them there. That's why they, they spend yeah. the money to travel like that. So, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, you get your I, one shot. But the reality is, yeah, we're dinging off posts all day long. <laughs> so, let me ask you a question, Gene. Yeah. Uh, this is one, one of the things I'm definitely trying to figure out here. And I have, I want to, I think I figured a lot of stuff with the spin, spinning reel, the bait casting. How yeah. do people get that thing to skip? Every time I try it, oh, my that's... my reel just goes bonkers. And I'm yeah. like, I would love to be able to do that with some of the stuff that I'm going after and, and, and get a nice little skip. And I wish I could had a, a great answer for you. Really, the 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 answer that I could give you is time. Um, mm -hmm. You got to get those settings just right based on the bait that you have. And there will be a little bit of finesse at the end where you're bringing up that pole, you know, to grab some slack. Lose actually makes a reel that is designed specifically for skipping. Um, really? it, there's a spool different size. Yeah. Uh, okay. Andy, uh, Andy Montgomery um, actually is a guy that he worked with. He's a lose pro and he worked with them okay. to design this reel and the braking system in it and everything is designed to handle that. And they literally show him throwing a jig and skipping it and his thumb never touches the, the spool and uh, it, it ends uh -huh. and it's good. I'm you know, so look, look for that one. Yeah. I think they're pretty reasonable. Um, okay. I, I don't know. I don't have one myself because yeah, most of the skipping I'll do pitching and flip skipping and mm -hmm. I can control that pretty easy. But if okay. I'm really long casting it, yeah, I, I too, especially now in a kayak where I don't have as much room to move, I grab a spin, a, a spin rod. Yeah. yeah. That's what I have to do too. And I have yep. to downsize it a little bit more. Not so heavy. Cause again, yep. I, I don't want to skip it. And all of a sudden it's just bloop. And then the fish just scatter. Yep. You know? Well, you know, and that's, that's a good thing. Don't, don't think you're behind the eight ball with that, because as long as you can get to where you're trying to get to, you're good to go. You know, exactly. and that's you can, too. you can improve it as time goes on, but you're good to go, man. If you're hitting your target, good. that's, that's all you need. But awesome. so let's talk Colorado or fishing adventures a little bit more. Let's, yeah. uh, let's get back to that there and, and get in. You, you start this nonprofit yeah. up to take guys and gals, heroes and warriors out fishing. Is yeah. it pr only fishing that you're doing outdoors? That's all I've kind of put out there yep. right now is just giving people the opportunity to do that. If they have other suggestions that they want to do, 
Yeah. I'm, I'm totally up for that. You know, I've, I've learned from my past that, um, you know, and I've even said it on Greece and stuff here. I'm privileged on where I'm at. Now, if I can give somebody that luxury of enjoyment, either from stress that they're going through or um, life struggles they've gone through, I want to do that. You know, they they deserve some notice. And I think that's why it's drawn me again. I'm not a military guy, but it's drawn me to some of these that I've seen and and um, have connected with. And I know we'll talk a little bit about this further, a little bit further on down. But it, it gives me that that hope for these people that it's going to give them a little excitement and maybe a little change for them to kind of be able to do that. So I offer that at any moment. I belong to just recently a new church here, um, Red Rocks Church, and did the same thing. I put a posting on there just saying, hey, if there's anybody out there that would like to kind of get away and, you know, uh, do whatever they want to do to get on to uh, to, to escape, <laughs> give me give me a shout. And I try and do that with a, every avenue that i can and again i don't ask for anything from my you know no money no nothing i just want to get people out there and i want to be able to see the enjoyment and then if i can allow me to post it so i can just expand that for others to notice that this is what i'm doing it's you know know this man it's real recreational therapy is real um yeah it, I don't know when it took place, but it, it got declassified as um, alternative therapy, and it's now considered in most journals that, that you read out there is what's known as complementary therapy. Um, it goes hand in, yeah, it goes hand in hand with other work that's going on for folks that are working with PTS, anxiety, depression. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to convert back to civilian life, you know, coming from, from other areas or just, sure. you know, general, uh, general, not mental health well being. you know what I mean? I mean, it doesn't, we, we work, you know, specifically veteran first responder, but yeah. there are many people out there for me, not even that, that are working their way, you know, learning how to, to, to work with PTS and, mm-hmm. and such that, that moment you get in, in engaging the outdoors, focusing on, on a goal, um, that peace that you get there, that, that clarity that starts to come together, you, what the hope is, is that we can give them the bug, right? Get them yeah, a bit with it. the fishing bug like us. And then, yes, trust me, that becomes everything you're thinking about all day at work. Everywhere else you go is like, what is the next, you know, how, how am I going to get that lure That's it. right where I yeah. need it? You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. it really does provide um you know a balancing piece that that perhaps maybe in the past had other things such as you know uh, i don't know pharmaceuticals you know being uh-huh. being prescribed if we yeah. can avoid that let's do that you know what i mean and all that does so, is mass stuff you know you want to get away from that if you can kind of uh do that in a sense it's, it's only going to be yeah i think brighter for whoever that that does experience that. And I think yeah. the pandemic really threw a big giant wrench into it. Yep. So I think people coming out of there, um, still struggling, yep. you know, I see it. And if I can do something to help and, and even beyond whatever years and helping out whatever foundations I'm in, I'm totally in. Well, I can tell you, uh, Terry, that the moment you and I spoke and when you reached out to me and you said, Hey, Anytime I can do anything to help take somebody fishing, whatever, you let me know. When you reached out like that, that told me right there the character of who you were and what you were looking to do. That. And man, that that's why I said, Yeah, I, I need to have you in the family with us here. Let's we believe really at, at, at Romans, you know, in that in that networking. We're all trying to do similar or work for the same people, you know what I mean? We're mm-hmm. trying to serve the same people out there. Um and you were saying about not getting paid. I mean, the fact of the matter is what I always tell these these guys is, trust me, dude, you already paid for this. Okay? Yeah. Long time yeah. ago. This is at the very least, you know, something that, that you have already bought and paid for. It just hasn't been delivered to you yet. And uh, please allow us. Give us the honor to bring it to you. It's an emotional payoff for me, Big you time. know. And, and I and I agree with you. And I, and I thank you for allowing me to be a part of it because that first one that I was on, it's, it's a whole new aspect you know i've had some um connections with with shannon from uh socks and cookies but this was the first one i've actually sat in uh, and really 
got a breakdown uh, of what was going on. I think it's just me and, and maybe one other person that may not have been uh, military, um, but everyone else on there and listening to the stories. I'm not military. Oh, I thought I thought you said you were. Okay. No, oh, I thought you were. The, oh, okay. No, it's so where it's, the, so it's, there you go. it's where our namesake came from. There I was you go. one of these uh, one of these heroes at uh, at That's one awesome. of the event one of my first events that I ever had a, uh, the honor to work with. He called yeah. me a true patriot. He says, "You may not be a veteran, but you are a true there patriot." There you go. And I'll that tell you, like, and that stuck, didn't it, dude? Next to being called Man. dad. It used to be coach was the next best title that yeah, I had been given. That, yep. This one took number two. Coach is now number three. Oh, you know, what, that's to hear awesome. to hear one of those those uh, what I deem as heroes, uh, but they they don't view themselves that way. But these one sure. of these warriors to call me a true patriot and somebody worth sure. fighting for. Sure. It's like okay, yep, we're done with doing business as usual. Now this is what we're going to do from here on out nice. with the fishing, and that's how it's going to happen. Okay, we're the new dy dynamic duo. Okay, yeah, that's I right. Like that. That's right. So yeah, no, that's that always. And in the beauty is, I'll tell you, one of the things that I was told from uh, uh, a gentleman that I consider a very, very good friend, uh, Justin uh, Patterson, Staff Sergeant Patterson, he said, listen, he goes, the funny thing is, we appreciate anytime people, you know, donate monies to these organizations that help veterans stuff. that, of course, that's what makes the world go round. He yeah. says, but I, he goes, but I want to tell you this to a to a, any any veteran involved in this anybody can write a check not sure. everybody wants to give their time he says that's what makes you so that's special it. man and i'm like i'm not crying you're crying you know whatever <laughs> whatever got sand in my eye <laughs> and, I, and i'll tell you man it hits you and it, it charges yeah. you and after that mm -hmm. that goes yeah this is you you create a nonprofit in the way you fly it's funny you say that because that's exactly what was brought to me when another, a third one is through ball. They have a veterans ball network and nice. I've reached out to them and uh, they said the same thing. People call up and say, Oh yeah, this is great. And then after a month, they're like, it's too much time. And so I asked him, I says, what, how much time are you looking at? And so, you know, five to 10 hours a month. I'm like, that's it. I says, you know, it's the same thing. Like when you, we talked, I said, you had me at hello. I said, I'm in. <laughs> I mean, I, I can help. I got that time. You know, it's like we did have our Jerry Maguire moment, didn't we? <laughs> we did. <laughs> we kept going, and I'm like, you had me at hello. <laughs> so we've always had that, and 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 I definitely feel a, a good connection with you know, true patriot outfitters. Yeah. I yeah, think yeah. with the Romans warriors, with you. Um, it's it's opened a new horizon on my side outside of just work fishing yeah. and being able now to a third thing i think three things are always good to kind of have and this is a nice third thing to kind of kind of put in there and help as much as i can so i got to ask about this i was at your facebook and your instagram page mm -hmm. and i saw you do something that's outside of all this but just yeah. it's like oh my goodness and i got i'll be honest with you man i, I don't know if i would have done it i mean I'm, i'll be the first to tell you that um but when i saw this video that you posted out there about you trying to bring some supplies to a to a homeless individual yeah. um and you knew he wasn't there that's why you were recording it because you had waited till he was because he wouldn't take stuff from you Right. He, he never wanted a handout. So you waited till he never. wasn't there and you <clears throat> kind of secret Santa drop off some stuff yeah. there. Where did yeah. that come from, man? That is, like I said, I envy it's, and also like, wow, holy Moses. It's that same thing that runs through me. It's like I've, I've felt so fortunate and I will do that at, at every aspect that I can. If I, if I have that ability to do that. I will, I will try my best to help somebody out. If it's something small, um, I'll go in that fashion. There was actually a couple of years ago, too, uh, me and somebody else saw this guy, uh, a veteran in a wheelchair, um, who had, uh, uh, I think he was uh, paraplegic, and we're like, hey, what, what can we do? What can we, how can we help you? So we both, there was a hotel just right down the way, uh, I, I bought one night hotel and the gentleman bought another and then I bought dinner for him. And it's just like, it warmed our heart, our hearts to be able to help. And it's again, it put a tear in my eye yeah. to see somebody out there, but being able to help somebody 
And again, people are like, well, you're just doing it for yourself. I'm not, I'm not doing it for myself. I've got everything I need. I want to be able to give somebody that joy and escape if they can just to kind of get themselves back up. And that's where this guy came from, the one that just recently, because I've, I just always see him. And I had to kind of do that. I think he might have been under the covers, but he didn't see me. So uh, I just put the stuff there and just walked away. I don't want to wake him up. And then I says, here, you know, if you need it, great. If you don't want it, give it to somebody else. Somebody else might be able to. You know, and I hear this, too, is people say, you know, oh, well, doing these good deeds, you know, it's you're doing it for your own self gratification, yeah, and- doing blah, blah, blah. Listen, <laughs> does it matter if we're helping our fellow brothers and sisters who gives a rat's behind Exactly. what the reason is on it exactly. if we're truly helping them now are we giving them something we think they should have or are we you know what are, what are you doing to help i personally say i don't care what the motivation is behind sure. it if if you're doing sure. a good deed for a neighbor i mean that's where it really starts okay yeah, it does it really does I tried to tell my kids this. One of my first uh, major pieces of voluntary besides coaching, because that's how I got into coaching, was volunteering to start. But one of my first real community givebacks was I was a first responder with the Larimer County Dive Rescue Team. Very proud of my my years served there with the Dive Rescue. And what I tried to teach my kids from that moment on is, I want you to think of this. Sit at your house and look to your left and look to your right. Do something nice. For both of those neighbors, something you think that they, they could use, be it yeah. shovel the sidewalk or when they're gone, um, you know, maybe, you know, get their mail or whatever and hold on, wh- whatever, yeah. Yeah. help them carry groceries in something. Yeah. If everybody on the street did that, imagine what that might do. Now build on that. Now go yeah. to your city block. Now go to your, you know, your, your area of neighborhood. Now go to your town. If we, yeah. if we honestly could now, is that a pipe dream? Probably, but mm-hmm. at the same note, it doesn't mean we can't try it. You know, hey, if you're so, doing it, maybe, maybe somebody yeah. will pay it forward. You know, that's, that's what you the look for. Hopefully somebody can kind of pay it forward yep. and, and kind of get us to, to where we're not um, in a situation that, that us is in right now. I mean, you got so many just conflicts and situations that are occurring And, you know, it's funny with one thing me and my wife have talked about. It's like the news. I can remember as a kid, they always led with something really good. Now it's just something bad after bad after bad after bad. And it's like we need to change that. You know, I know I'm going a little bit off uh, off topic, but it would just be nice. It ties right into this. And and I think part of this is, again, if we can – you know, T- True Patriot Health Feeders, Romans Warriors Foundation, little things like this that we can start and then maybe expand on. People will start understanding this and, and jump on the bandwagon. Brian Romans, our founder of the RWF, yeah. taught me this one very, one very important <laughs> thing. One at a time. If that's the way we got to do it, then by God, that's the way we'll do it. One at a time. If we can save one like life. philosophy. If we yeah. can affect yeah. one, you know, one family, whatever it is, that's that's good. That yeah. is the goal. Now, obviously, we want to reach as many as possible because we want to, yeah. you know, the Stop 22 tour, you know, obviously trying to deal with veteran and first responder suicides, trying to stop that. Yeah. Um, but beyond that, you know, one at a time, that's the goal. That's what we'll keep doing this. And if you can affect that change, man, then boom, it's uh, yeah, it's it's something big. It's powerful. It is. And when you see it, when you see it, you the humbling, mm-hmm. the gratefulness, and the energy you get from that to go do it again, it's huge. It's that's it's, the I'm, thing. I'm getting goosebumps just talking yeah. to you about it, man. It's like <laughs> that's, that's what we do. Yeah, the first experience that you have, it's just going to be ingrained in you, and yep. you're just going to want to build on that to be able to do more. And then again, it's going to be like a tree, you know, you're just going to start expanding, you know, the limbs are going to come off, the the leaves are going to start growing and you're going to be able to just do more than what you first thought. Yep. And that's, that, that's what I want to do again. Is that give me some pleasure? Yeah. But I, it's not the main, I want to be able to give my time that I have to those who, who who can deserve some. I was going to say who deserve it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, more totally. than deserve it. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. You know, and that's that's the thing. You know, when I watched your video, 
what it reminded me of is, you know what? I've had these thoughts. I'll see a situation that I want to do, and then I don't act on it. Mm -hmm. The difference is you acted on it. And that's yeah. to me where I'm like, okay, there's, there's where, <laughs> man, I am, you know, I am in awe and I watch mm -hmm. that and it's like, okay, that's impressive stuff right there. This is a guy that I, I need to be associated with um, because just, you know, no one is going to make me a better person and just watching that. I, I will be very straightforward and honest because like, I'm, I'm known, I don't, I don't gaslight, you know, on politics and such, but yeah. I am uh, not politically correct at times, and it's just pe people that know me know where my heart's at with this whole thing. But when mm -hmm. it comes to the folks holding signs on the side of the street and so forth, that upsets me more than I feel mm -hmm. okay because of I know how many small businesses are out there hiring right now. Yep. And so that gets me, but situations <laughs> like yours where you've got an individual there that circumstance has created um, – and we don't know the full story, but the fact that he no. wouldn't take stuff from you yeah. and you went ahead and secret sanded his, his butt like that to me, yeah. that's I'm like, now that's it. I like that. I, that's good style right there. <laughs> I had to wait for the right time. Cause I will say I, I did that to one other person that I got burned on, Yep, um, it'll happen. but you know what? It's, it's going to happen. So uh, to do this for this gentleman here, it's like, I want to do it. And then considering the cold snap that we had for two days, I True. mean, that was like, you know, that's Midwest cold. <laughs> so oh, and I knew what right. that was. So um, that was unusual, but it's like, you see that. And uh, even all the other homeless, is everybody homeless for good reasons or bad reasons? You know, right. it's like, it's really hard to tell when it comes to that. But uh they say me, I always have like a bag of chips. If it's somebody, I'll give them some bag of chips, a handful of them come up there and stuff like that. But um, I try and do my best. Right. Well, from what we're seeing out here, man, you're, you're not, you're not just doing your best. You're doing an awesome, awesome work. And I'm looking forward to you and I collaborating together uh, on some cool events. We've got a relationship yeah. worked out with Stanley Lake um, provided they you stay. Yeah. yeah. And provided they stay, um, where they don't permit trailered boats on it. There was some talk about that. Um, and provided they stay that way, then it's going to remain uh, our home water. And that's awesome. I would love to do a joint thing where we have Colorado fishing adventures and true Patriots, you know, with Romans underline, we do some open house kayak stuff where we can take some folks out in these. I've got, you know, obviously we've, you know, with team new canoe, we've got some uh, unlimiteds that we can put out there. Sure. Um, I'm actually looking to pick up a different uh, model also, maybe a little bit. It's a, about a 10 and a half footer. Uh, it's called okay. the F F10. Okay. Um, kind of excited to get a chance. That's mainly probably going to be for my wife um, that I'll end up sure, sure. Pers personally buying it, but we'll use it. Uh, you know, we'll donate it uh, for usage and yeah, this, uh, we could have some cool stuff. This could be a lot of fun this year. You know what um, I got to say again, Gene? What's that, man? You had me at hello. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I'm in. I, I live right by it. So it's like I'm – I know you you offered. I think I had something else going on that same day this past summer. Yeah. Because I was helping something through Ball Network. They did something at um, Chatfield. Oh, okay. Um, so uh, it, uh, people with PTSD and a few other things, and I forget the name of the, the, the service that they did, but Perfect. another eye-opener. But I would definitely love to be a part of that. Definitely. Well, and I threw this last year one together just, uh, you know, literally in a few weeks and mm -hmm. um, the park, the folks I work with there, they were really hoping that, you know, they wanted me to do something a little bigger with that marketing and such. And like I told them, I'm just trying to get my feet wet with this, to be honest yeah. with you. Let us, sure. let us roll this out next year. You know, so I was talking with them in, uh, in September. I was like, next year, let's plan on doing three or four of these and let's definitely work yeah. together to really broadcast this out there. Um sure where folks can show up to the park. Um, it's a neat little body of water there. Um, mm -hmm. It offers, it offers a lot of that, uh, that good tranquility that you're looking for. And I'll be honest with you, uh, I'm kind of giving away the juice here, but there's a, about a third of this lake is buoyed off. No motors, not even electric are allowed in it. Yeah. It's because of the milfoil growth that's in there. They don't want the motors, you know, uh, mm -hmm. cabbage, cabbage coleslaw on that up throughout the whole mm -hmm. lake. So you, you can you can motor up to the buoys, but then you got to paddle yes, or pedal did. your way through yeah. it. Somebody told me about and, this. <laughs> and dude, I'm telling <laughs> the you, there are monsters <laughs> in that milfoil. In that's one, what I've heard. 
in one day before I really had my, uh, my, my drop shotting in weeds, uh, method figured out literally in a 15 minute window, I lost two different, easily three, three plus pound green bass on drop shotting in weeds. I was trying to throw in the cover and I just didn't have my gear the proper way. And within a 15 minute frame, I found this hole in there where there was a pack of them hiding under the weeds and I lost two of them on the jump. You know, they spit, the, uh. they spit the hook. And so, yeah, I, that's when I realized, and then I, I've gone through there a few other times, uh, pitching some soft plastics around and I have yeah. caught a few things in there that I was like, I don't even want to take a picture of this. I don't want to show anybody yeah. about this. <laughs> I think so, it's yeah. a plus not having those boats go through there. Oh uh, my another gentleman had told me all about it. And I'm like, I never really thought there was anything there. But the guy's like, there is. Yeah. And he says, you know what, if, if, if you go and you've got the right equipment and stuff like that, he says, you yeah. should be able to get on them too. So I'm like, okay, I'll have to give that a try next year. There's a few, depending on the, so the water, like Colorado, the water fluctuates quite a bit there. So you have to kind of plan where you're going to be with it. And it really changes your shoreline structure quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, I've not had a ton of luck on the shoreline structure. You have to find um, structure and cover that's off a shore most of the time. And when you find that, you'll find a pool. The drops, Um, stuff like that. Do they have drops in there? There are, yeah, there are a few okay, ledges that you can play okay. around with. Uh, there's some channels that you can, uh, that you can mess That's with. That's the other thing I was going to ask, channels. Yep. Okay. There's some channels, and then there's lots of laydowns. And when you find okay. those laydowns, man, they like to, to congregate up on that stuff. And there, there is actually grass. There's milfoil, you know, weeds in that That's lake. That's first, because I don't find any, like, say, the lake here is, there's none because you get so many carp. It's, yep. it's, but you do have a lot of rocky structure areas where you will find them. Nice. Uh, but yeah, milfoil. That 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 to me sounds like Midwest, right? That's there. That's back. Yeah, that's gonna say that's, that's back. back in the Midwest. Yep. That's all you would find. So so yeah. let me ask you a quick question uh, yeah. from my end. What what is your favorite lure that you like to throw? Oh, uh, <laughs> and especially like this past year, because I can yeah. tell you from from my end, this is the first year I really got into the crankbaits. Oh, there I was you go. never a crankbait guy, and now I'm finding you know, depending on you know the depth, the color. Is it clear? Is it dirty? Is it fall time? Is it springtime? I had so much fun with the cranks because before that, a lot of my videos, it was everything was just wacky rig. Yep. And you know what? I think people probably get a little bored with it. And I'm like, I try to do some different stuff. And for me, this past year, the expansion onto crankbaits, I think, mm-hmm. has broadened my horizon and learning about um, what's another one? Uh, oh, I can't remember the. Uh, well, the drop shot was new to me too, um, and then you had the uh, there's another rig too, and I can't remember the name of it right now. The Ned rig? Um, nah, the Ned rig was was something I had, but it's 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 kind of like it's got the hook, and it's got a little arm on it, so the worm just oh a fluctuates. Tokyo Tokyo, Tokyo rig. rig. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one was like solid for me too, and I'm like, yeah. this is nice compared to doing what I've just been fishing with the last couple of years because it was always just a wacky rig for the most part mm-hmm. or Texas rig, you and, know, and it's, you like know, why? Nice I, I don't know why I can tell you why it catches why? fish. It does. Catch fish. <laughs> <laughs> I want something different. Right. You're 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 wanting to expand on I, that stuff. I but. need to, because there's times that it's not always going to work. You or know, I think the quality that you pull from it isn't that's the thing mean, too because you're fishing against uh, some uh, hammers like Scott Brand and oh you better yeah. you better bring your game against a guy. Oh like yeah, that. oh yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Great guy. I, I will I have to say, he, love Scott. He taught me, he taught me a lot of stuff. I love the one that you had with him. Matt Kern was another one that came out on this lake and taught me a, a, a few things on on how to fish out here. And I'm mm-hmm. like that kind of stuff, and it leads back to be, being part of the Colorado Kayak Fishing Club which really expanded my knowledge of it. But I know even one of the things that we spoke about is trying to get in the all American. And I know if things work out right and you know, your trailer and stuff like that, maybe we can connect, but if not, I may try and hit one or two of them. I did reach out to, I think his name's Jason. Um, So I'll probably be signing up at the first of the year for that one, just to be on board of it. You know, 50 bucks. I can do that to start off and then look at it from there. It's 150, I think roughly for a tournament. So, Roughly. Hey, I need to expand. If I really enjoy it, uh, that's what I want to do. You know, you asked the question, what my, my favorite, 
Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, I'll tell I'll tell you that I have been in where my heart always lies is in power fishing, moving baits of any mm -hmm. kind, top, middle of the water column, bottom of the water column, whatever. Moving baits is is where it's at for me. Um, and this last year, I got a chance to add some confidence behind drop shotting. Now, now that I've got a sure. system worked out, James Strawbridge was instrumental in helping me kind of yeah. iron out some wrinkles <laughs> that I had. I, you know, sure. when you see another person do it with success and then they kind of you know they're not showing you mu as much as they are just kind of you know here try this try this try this it allowed me you know because i've used drop shot and i've caught fish off mm -hmm. a drop shot in the past and mm -hmm. i just didn't like it mm -hmm. getting some confidence going there you know certainly did help because in today's world you just can't be a, a one-trick pony you've got to no, have you can't a variety if you're going to compete against the best in the in the in the midwest or nation but i will say what i have been known for from the very beginning and what i got back to this year and it was the tournament that we had our best finish at uh big bass in third place at lewis and clark and that is a jig um see, what yeah. what got me into to bass fishing was throwing a jig it is one of the way i use it can be one of the most versatile baits i can use it as a search bait i can use it as a yeah. uh, a stationary i'll i'll move it quite a bit as a moving bait it can mm -hmm. imit it can imitate you know crawfish it can imitate bait fish it you can do it. it all and that's what you know i've been with all terrain tackle the longest out of any of my sponsors i've been with them okay. uh, i want to say for seven seven years eight years now and it's because uh that was just what i was known as mm -hmm. i i as a guy that threw a jig everywhere yeah. i went i'm throwing a jig i don't care if it's spring winter fall i'm throwing a jig at something somewhere doing you know something with it um sure so yeah, that's you know, but definitely power fishing. You know, I mean, top water. I'll throw a stupid oh, frog. I'll throw a frog when I shouldn't throw a frog, just because water, it no. looks like a frog <laughs> should be thrown there. I know they're not biting the top water, but I'm throwing it. <laughs> for that thing to hit, it's like you throw it near. Like out here, we've got some boat docks. You got the rocks. You got a few different things, and yeah. you're just waiting for that thing to slam it. Yep. And it's like it's it's just, and then you get the ones that are like right near the boat that just you feel like you're gonna have a heart attack. Yeah. Because it scares the the Jesus out of you, and yeah. you're just like, this is phenomenal, dude. I felt like Oppenheimer that I had discovered this this you know amazing <laughs> thing when I found these little buzz baits, the minis. Oh, because the minis! I'm, yeah, I'm throwing yeah. them on a medium spin cast reel, and I'm hitting you know a dime from you know thirty yards out. I'm just like zing, hitting right where yeah, I want to, this, yeah. And I'm dinging it off stumps, and I'm just wailing on them, you know, on the river. Mm -hmm. I was wailing on them with that little thing in a several of uh, well, Pickwick. I caught several with it. You know, it's like I thought I th had found the juice with that little guy, but yeah, that's uh, things that change. Time. They do, they do for sure. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, and that's the funny thing that, that we look at this, uh, how birds of a feather, right? Um, yeah. People that are like-minded and such. And I think maybe that's where also my respect for the CKFC comes in because not only are they an, uh, an amazing group of, of anglers and outdoor enthusiasts, but as an organization, they were founded on the very roots of giving back to their communities. Yes. And every year they choose somebody, you know, that they, that they go and do. And obviously, you know, um, this year have, we've made the announcement many times they've chosen our organization to That's awesome. receive the, that yeah. their generosity. And the beauty that we love with that is the fact that we're going to make sure that this goes right back into services and, and uh, adventures and little deals that we want to do that, Maybe even some of their members are going to, because there's many of their members that are veterans that yeah. we want to work with. Um, I've actually sure. got a, an interview set up with Matt Collins, going to get him on here. Okay. We're going to chat with Perfect. him. Um, you know, uh, Jeremy, we already interviewed yeah, yeah. him. I'm getting ready to probably air his on Monday. We're going to put his okay. interview up um, awesome. or maybe the following week. And so, yeah, it's it's these these folks and their families that have given so much. We want to make sure that those services are going right back there. So that's great. Um, that's Right. And that's in the CKFC. We can't say enough good about that group of folks just because I don't fish there. That's just a personal fishing, you know, fishing craft uh, preference is all. I, and that I makes got, sense. Yeah. I got a lot of money tied up in, uh, in my gear that uh, I try to scoot across large bodies of water with. We don't really have too many large bodies out here. So no, no, we don't. Yeah. 
and I'm, I'm the older I get, the less versatile when it comes to my systems that I get. Like I said, I, I gotta have things right where I gotta have them, man, or I'm just a mess. I'm, I'm with you. They said I had uh, <laughs> issues with, with the back and on, on my way to recovery, hopefully I'll be hundred percent by the time the season starts. So, uh, yeah, it's like when you get older, things kind of creep up on you <laughs> real fast. <laughs> Don't they? And trying, to, and trying to get over them and back to normal just takes a lot of time. We're not as bouncy as we used to be. No, no. <laughs> I try to be. I try to be. It's we are first. here. <laughs> most of the time, yes. Most That's of right. the time. <laughs> well, listen, Terry, I can't thank you enough, yeah. man, for stopping in. And I'm sure that throughout this next coming season, you and I are going to be on the show again together. We'll talk about some events we got That'd going on out there. You Love guys it. ever have anything on your side that you need, you know, that we can help with broadcasting out there? You know, we're here. Um, and uh, we'll, I'm sure you and I will be chatting a ton throughout uh, uh, throughout this stuff. And, yeah, who knows if I can get this uh, trailer figured out as to why it wants to burn up tires today. So but <laughs> right now, I'm for my national stuff, the kayak feeling in the back of the pickup. And we're just going to keep the trailer for hey, local stuff. That's but, fine. If I need to, I could put my ten and a half on on top of my roof and I'll, I'll follow you probably to one. There you go. So, there you uh, go. I like to hit one of them. So. Heck yeah, you well like I like I told you, we're I'm I'm definitely down for the the lodging side of it. We can hang yeah. out. We can, we can go fishing on some of these places for sure. I like that. I like that. All right, man. Well, listen, folks. Don't forget, please smash the subscribe button for us. That's that support right there. That's all you need to do. If uh, if you can't, don't find yourself in a position to be able to donate to the True Patriot Outfitters. No worries. Smash subscribe. Tell your friends. Tell uh, your family members. Do the same thing. That is a huge huge help. Terry, again, thank you so much. Check them out, you, folks, man. at Colorado. Colorado at uh, YouTube. You'll see him at Colorado or Fishing Adventures at YouTube and on Instagram, Colorado or underscore Fishing underscore Adventures. As always, folks, tight lines. Be safe. <laughs>